All right, so today we're gonna to be looking at the caged system. This is a great way to learn the same chords in a lot of different places over the neck of your guitar. Why would you wanna do that? Well, for one, to give you a bigger tonal palette. So, you know, this C sounds a certain way, but that C sounds totally different. They're both C chords, but uh, the voicing mean the notes are in a different order or a different octave sound totally different. So that's one reason. The other reason might be positional playing. If you are playing a, an A up here and you need to go to C next, you might not want to jump all the way down here. You might want to go to a closer C, like this one again. So that's uh, just a couple of reasons why you should learn the cage method. It also just helps you learn the notes on the fingerboard as well. Just become a more proficient guitar player, learn the fretboard better. So let's get right into it. It's called the caged system because C, A, G, E, D. Those are the five open shapes of the major chord. So when you play a C chord open, plain old C chord, that's the C shape. It's a C chord, but it's also the C shape. And we're gonna move that shape around just like we are the A, G, E, and D. Okay, so think of those as forms now. Don't get confused with the terminology here. We're gonna be playing all C chords to start off with, but using the A form, the G form, the E form, and the D form, okay? So we start with our open chord C, like this, and then the next form up the neck will be the next letter in the word caged, so A. So we're gonna play the A form, but it's going to be a C chord, okay? So when we think about the A form, this is one of the most common bar chords. We're just moving this up. So I had first learned it like this because I didn't know better, but then I figured out that most people just bar with their third finger. So first you want to find the root. If you know this bar chord already, you probably know that your whatever note your first finger on is the root. So this is a C note because of this C chord. And so now we're here on the A shape, but it's a C chord. So we have C and C but the A shape. So we went C, A. Now next is the G shape. So think about what a G chord looks like. Think about where the root is. Here, G is the root. So if we move that to C and play that shape, it's kind of like if you have a capo uh, on two and you play a G. It's not really a G. You're playing the G shape, but it's an A chord. It sounds like an A chord. It's just like that. So literally what the G shape would be of a C chord would be this. Now, this is not really practical and for some people with smaller hands, it might even be difficult to play. I tell all my students to play the shape like this. We're just omitting the first and the sixth string and it's actually really pretty because you get an inversion. Now the third is in the bass. So I use this shape for all of my G shaped uh, chords. So this is our next one. So, so far to review, we have. Okay, and then we just have two more. The most common, the E shape. If, again, if you've already done some bar chords, you've probably done this shape, but you take an E and you move it up in bar behind it and you get the E shape. Now we just need to move this up to where the root is. The root is on the sixth string. Just like when you play an open E, the root is the sixth string. Same thing when you make it a movable chord. Go up to the eighth fret, and we have our C chord here on the eighth fret, E shape. So again, we have C, C A shape, my C uh, G shape, and C E shape. The last one, then C A G E D is going to be up here. Think about moving a D chord. Now you could just move this if you just want to play the first three strings and not use the open string, uh, not move up the open string. You could just move this chord all the way up to C, figure out which note your root is. In this shape, the note, the root is a D. So the D would be on the second string and find where your third finger on the second string would make a C up here on the 12, 13, 12. And that's your C shape. And that's totally usable in some situations. There's a Led Zeppelin song where it's like. And just moving around that D shape. If you want to add that lower root, then you need to move this up and account for the open string. And so that shape then looks like this. It would be in the same place, but you've got to rearrange your fingers and use your pinky and bring this first finger back to get the C on the fourth string. And that would be the full D shape of a C chord. 
So now all five positions of a C chord. C. C as an A shape. C as a G shape. C as an E shape. And C as a D shape. All right, so now you almost have everything you need to go through C, A, G, E, and D and do this for all of your open chords, uh, major chords. So next you would go to uh, A and play all A's up and you would still continue the same order. So after A, then you would go to an A in a G shape and then an A in an E shape because A, G, E, you're just spelling the word cage no matter where you start, you keep the same order like this. Now the one movable shape we didn't go over is the C shape since we started with C. So let's go to D. We're in D major and let's say we're gonna do our cage. So C, A, G, E, D, we're starting on D. So then it's just gonna start back over at the C shape. So the next shape will be C shape of a D. This shape I like to play just simply like this and omit the first string. If you wanna be, if you want that higher note, you can do a little bar here, but I think it's more comfortable to bring your thumb over, mute the sixth string, and play that shape like this. It's much easier to move around and not fuss with the bar, uh, but you have those two options. So go through, play C five places on the neck, A five places on the neck, G five places on the neck, E five places on the neck, and D five places on the neck. If you learned anything, please subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.